Hi guys, here we are. We're going to do another video and this one is going to be uh, looking at question 21. And uh, 21 is pretty well the exact same kind of question as question 23 and question 14. So I'm not going to bother with those two questions. You get this one out of the way and you probably can do any of them at this point. The, the trick is making sure you know what to do uh, for one of them. It's the same thing every time. It kind of falls in line with what we were doing before with the pulley problems. So what I want to do here is, uh, yeah, let's go through it. Let's see what we can do here. So I got a tractor trailer, in other words, a big truck. Here we are, right there. And it's pulling two trailers that uh, start, it starts from rest and accelerates to a speed of 16.2 kilometers per hour in 15 seconds. Now it says on a straight level section of highway. Now uh, this doesn't matter to you too much, but the, the thing is is that if this was a different question where say the, the tractor trailer was pulling up and what we call an incline, something like this, uh, then the question would be very, very different and much more difficult, actually. But you can be happy to know that you will never be asked this kind of question, mainly because uh, that kind of question is something that you'll be doing in Physics 12. So don't worry. Now, the mass of the truck itself is, uh, now I've labeled it, in the question it says T, and I think labeling the truck T is horrible because one of our forces that we use is tension, which we usually label as T or F of T, but most of the time I tend to say T. So if I have the thing called T and then I have a tension called T, things are going to get confusing. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I label things correctly. So I'm going to say C instead. So C is my tractor trailer and it's uh, 5450 kilograms. And then I got the first trailer, A, and that's a certain mass, 31,500 and a mass of B in the back. So there's my three guys. Now the question is, what's the magnitude of force that the truck must generate in order to accelerate the entire vehicle? So I know the acceleration I'm supposed to do, or at least I have an idea I could calculate it. And so what I'm going to try to do is find out what is the force that this truck must do to get that acceleration. So what is the acceleration? In this case, I was not actually just told it. They made it a little tougher for me. Not too tough, but I mean a little tough. So what do I have to look at? I'm trying to find the acceleration. What I do know is that it started from rest, so I know that my VI is equal to zero. And I know my VF, and that's equal to 16.2 kilometers per hour. Mm, okay, that's, um, if I divide by 3.6, that gives me, what does that give me? Uh, 4.5 meters per second. And I got a time, delta T, of 15 seconds. So that's, that's, that's not too horrible because I, I know that acceleration is equal to delta V over delta T. So all I have to do is say, well, 0 to 4.5. So that's 4.5 minus 0. That's 4.5. All divided by 15. That will give me an acceleration of, uh, roughly 0 0.3 meters per second squared. So I got my acceleration now. That didn't, that didn't take too much, but I had to do that first before I knew anything. Now, what do I have to do here? I have to make my free body diagrams for all these guys. So we'll start in the back. That's probably the easiest one. Uh, now notice what it says here. Assume no frictional forces. So there's no friction here. There's no friction, which would make this a lot harder but I still have to remember what all my different forces are. Well, oh, I love my gravity. Everybody always does gravity first. Here we go, force of gravity, and this is force of gravity B. And then I have my normal force, force B. Now, what else is acting on this? Well, in this case, the only thing that's acting on it is that it's being pulled by this guy. So we'll say he's being pulled by tension, I guess, one? We'll call that tension one. So let's move over to the next. There's nothing else acting on this. I know that it's accelerating this way, so I have a net force in this direction. It looks like 
Actually, I could draw. I could write down the net force already. So F net B equals mass times acceleration. Always write that first. And this is actually something I can work out already. I know the mass, and I already know the acceleration. So this I know, and that equals T1. So actually, I know this number. I know what T1 is already. I know it just right off the bat. Um, it is nothing more than the mass of uh, B, which is 19,600 kilograms, times the acceleration, which is 0 0.3. Wow, that was easy. So right off the bat, I can find out that T1 is equal to this time, 19,600.3, that is 5,880 newtons. Wow, well, that was simple. Okay, well, let's move on anyway, and let's look at the next one. I got uh, A, now what's going on with A? A is a little more trickier. I'm going to have, let's start her off. Force of gravity A, yeah. I've got a normal force. We'll call this normal force A. Now, what's going on? Well, Newton's third law. If this guy is uh, being pulled, that means the trailer in the back is pulling me. So I have uh, the same tension force pulling me backwards. Okay, but what is pulling me more must be the tension pulling me that way it must be bigger and I'll call that tension 2. So let's look at that. Um, my net force. I should mention now I, I say net force but I should be saying it's the net force only in the X direction. I mean I know this these trucks are sitting on the ground and they're not moving in the Y direction so I don't really say net force X because I know that net force Y is already zero. But if I had to be specific, I would say this is x direction. So what is this one? Well, net force, I know it's accelerating, so I've got mass times acceleration here. I should mention this is mass A. This one was mass B. I shouldn't, yeah, I should always say that. Okay. So in this case, I know that the tension 2, which is positive, will be bigger than tension 1. So I'm going to have tension 2 minus tension 1. Well, once again, once again, I know tension 1. I know the net force because I know the mass and the acceleration, which means I can once again calculate tension 2 if I want. Uh, so tension 2 in this case would be equal to mass A acceleration plus T1. And that would be equal to, well, mass, mass A in this case is uh, 31,000 sorry, 31,500 kilograms times the acceleration, that's 0 0.3. And in this case, it's plus T1, and T1 I already know. That's 5880 newtons. So in this case, if I go through the calculations, that will give me T2 equal to 15,000. Wait a minute. Yes. 15,330 newtons. Okay. All right. Well, let's, let's keep going. Okay. So now we go to the last one here. So I've got, once again, the truck. The truck has a force of gravity. Let's see. It has my normal force. Now, in this case, it's... When it's it's getting pulled backwards by the tension too. It's because it's it's pulling these two trailers, so it has to be pulled. But it is producing a force on its own. It's 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 the truck is the thing that's pushing everything. So there is an applied force by the truck itself, and this has got to be greater than T two, or else it's not going to be accelerating forward. So if we actually did that, let's see that F net C now. Oops, I forgot all the lines that go above all these net forces. Shouldn't make these mistakes. You're going to think I'm an idiot. Okay, so force net C, what do I got? Well, that's going to be equal to my mass, in this case, mass C acceleration. 
And that will be equal to, let me see, going in the forward direction is force applied. And it will be subtracting the T2. Look at that. I know T2. I know my mass and my acceleration. Once again, once again, I can figure everything out. I can find out that what my force applied is right away by simply adding up these two guys just like that. So what is that going to be equal to? It'll be equal to my mass of C, which is 5, 4, 50, multiplied by the acceleration, 0 0.3. Once again, remember, the acceleration is the same for everybody. They're all tied together, so they all have the exact same acceleration. And then I'm adding T2 in this case, which is 15, 3, 30 newtons. That means I'm going to get a final applied force, a final applied, uh, applied force of 16.965 newtons. Okay, so uh, let's be careful. Let's make sure we got everything here that's correct. Um, actually, uh, if I look at this, uh, my the question is, okay, what, what what's my what are my significant digits in this case now? I guess if I had to say, I mean, it's the 15 seconds. 15 seconds is just two significant digits, and I can't really claim anything more precise than that, which means I can't say 16,965. I, I have to say, what do I say? I have to say only two significant digits. So 1.7 times 10 to the 4 newtons, which would be the proper way of saying this answer. Don't, don't forget that. When you do a test, when you do anything, you're always looking uh, to make sure your significant digits are correct at the very end of doing any kind of problem like this. So this, this question actually is a real doozy. It's got everything uh, you, you might find uh, in any of these kind of train of objects being pulled by something. Uh, even like the other question where we have the guy pulling his two children who are all holding hands. Uh, it's always the same kind of idea, except even here it was a little more funny because it started off by giving us the initial and final velocities, the time it took, so you had to calculate the acceleration first before you did anything. But then, just like almost all physics questions, the first thing I did was draw a picture, draw the free body diagrams, and then construct all the net force equations. It's really nothing more than that. The question is, is you have to be careful about where the negative and the positives go. So you have to remember that, well, I have decided that this direction is positive. And I got to make sure that I say that all throughout or else I'm going to get very different answers each time. I'll be subtracting when I'm not supposed to or adding when I'm not supposed to. And I got to make sure I do that right or else I'm going to get the wrong answers. Okay, so uh, that's that. Let's see if I have to do any other questions. Uh, otherwise, uh, I hope this helps you. All right, guys. See you later.